Welcome back to Modifiers Explained. In today's episode I will teach you everything you need to know about the cast modifier in Blender. So let's jump right in and select our cube, our starting cube and give it a cast modifier. Let's tap into edit mode and give it a bit more resolution to work with. Now if you go out of the edit mode and change the factor setting in the cast modifier you can really see what it does. It morphs the mesh you give it into a certain shape. There are three predefined shapes, which are the sphere, a cylinder and a cuboid. Let's select the cylinder and with the factor control you control the influence. It can even go in the negative direction, which again results in very interesting shapes. The final cuboid version, of course, has to be tested with a different object than a cube. In this case, we'll choose a sphere, give it the modifier, set it to cuboid and change the influence. And you can really see now it changes, it transforms it into a cube-like shape. This effect can be limited to a certain axis, in this case the XY axis or just the X axis like here. With the factor control you can again change the influence, um, but you can choose whatever axis you want which fits your uh, needs. Now let's talk about the radius and size control. With the radius you can change the radius of the mesh, the transformation mesh. Um, and by default they are both connected, radius and size, but if you uncheck this checkbox you can change the radius of the, the transform, transformation mesh in, in essence and its influence. So you can create some very interesting, uh, interesting effects with uh, this feature. If you want to limit the effect of this modifier not to a certain axis but to very specific vertices, you can do this. Let's select some vertices we, we want uh, the effect to get applied on. Go into the vertex groups and create a new vertex group. In the modifiers panel, let's select our newly created vertex group. And now you see it's just applied wherever we selected our vertices. Where this effect really gets creative is if we have a look at object transformations. Let's add in a new empty, this empty, and select it in our object setting. And if we now move the empty, you can see this a morphing object, this transform sphere gets uh, moved with it. And you can even do this with a cylinder, but you can't rotate it. To do rotate it, you have to enable the checkbox in the settings. And now if you rotate the empty, we can see our mesh gets transformed accordingly. This uh, of course works with scale, rotation and transformation in this case. So now the interesting question is, what do I really use this modifier for? What are the use cases? And we'll talk about two examples in the following part. The first one will be the quad sphere. If we have a look at the common UV sphere, we can see it has a triangle fan up top. And this is not always wanted. Sometimes you want a really perfect quad sphere. To do this, let's add in a new cube, give it some resolution and apply a cast modifier. If we now transform it and apply it and have a look at the final mesh, we see it's a perfect round sphere, but it doesn't have any triangles. And this is crucial if you want to do sculpting, for example, or if you want to do some hard surface modeling stuff. Um, there are use cases for this. And as a bonus tip, I will show you how to create an um, a inset in this case and cut a hole into our sphere. Um, this is very useful for these kinds of applications if you don't want to have any triangles in your sphere. Now you know a quick and fast way to achieve it. For another example, let's add in a new plane and give this one a lot of uh, subdivisions um, and a lot of resolution. Now let's add in a sphere and scale it a bit down, move it up and press Ctrl A to apply the uh, scale. Let's add a cast modifier and set our object to our sphere. And with an enable transformations, we can see the sphere acts kind of like a force sphere, kind of like, like an influencer on our mesh. And you can really create some cool effects like soft bodies or some wormhole effects with this. Um, there are some cases uh, where this will be very useful and um, you can see it, it kind of morphs if it transitions into, into our plane. Play around with the factor and um, yeah, then have fun with it and get creative with it. You can even move your sphere around. For this demonstration, I'm quickly gonna make the surface a bit bumpy so you can see that this effect works uh, on uneven surfaces as well. A quick idea which comes to my mind is 
if something is crawling under human skin, this is an effect you see a lot of times in movies, this would be the perfect tool to achieve this effect. Just move it below the skin layer and move it a bit around and you get this interesting effect. As a quick side note, I'm gonna talk about an improvement to this effect. If you can see this example, even if it's, I smooth it out, uh, the surface is a bit rough. Let's add in a smooth modifier and increase the strength and you can now see how the surface gets a bit more smoothed. This will remove some uh, edge artifacts, this will remove these jagged edges. Both of these modifiers, uh, the cast and smooth modifiers, work great in conjunction with each other. And that's everything you need to know about the cast modifier. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, leave a like and maybe consider subscribing. This would really help me out. With that said, see you next time here at Rescan.